change of mission. A 135th scale diorama depicting the Special Air Service and the Long Range Desert Group in Libya, 1943. The situation to date. The North African campaign was four months from concluding. The Anglo-American forces from the West, and the British and Commonwealth forces from the East have squeezed the Axis forces into Tunisia. A combined patrol of the SAS and LRDG, had been traveling west towards Gadamis, in order to conduct a raid. On their weekly radio link with GHQ Middle East, in Cairo, the commander received a warning order for a change in mission. Confirmatory orders would be given that evening, in their night location. After eight hours of hard going, the patrol arrived at their night lock, and commenced harboring up. The patrol's night lock was high on an escarpment, that provided overwatch on the most likely enemy approaches. The patrol cleared the position, and then the commander sighted his call sign to take advantage of the terrain. The patrol approached the night lock from the east, with the last vehicle placing anti-tank and anti-personnel mines on the track. The mines would be recovered the next day. The defensive position was broken into three sectors. Sector 1, was the responsibility of the Long Range Desert Group. Sector 2, was the responsibility of the Special Air Service and Sector 3, the Long Range Desert Group. During the remaining daylight hours, the SAS manned a sentry post on the high ground, that provided excellent observation from the southeast, going clockwise, to the northeast. The patrol headquarters located itself in the middle of the defensive position. However, for the radio link to GHQ, the LRDG command and the SAS command vehicles, moved to the edge of the escarpment, as that was the best place for communications as deemed by the radio operator. The LRDG signalman and corporal set about erecting the radio masts and window antenna. The commanders prepared for the confirmatory orders for the change of mission. This is the point in time, where the diorama has been constructed. Morse communications have been established with GHQ Cairo, and the orders group has commenced. Now let's break down the diorama into its components. The Special Air Service, depicted here, is the detachment commander's jeep, carrying a standard load for a two to three week operation. The Jeep is Tamiya's British Special Air Service version, with scratch-built modifications. The removed fender and bumper bar, was the result of an accident during a previous mission. Due to the lack of replacement parts, it was prudent to remove the damaged pieces and keep the vehicle in service. The Jeep Pannier this prototype design was first adopted by the British Airborne Forces, shown here, during Operation Market Garden. Former paratroopers, now serving in the SAS, designed a pannier that enabled a load to be distributed evenly, therefore, reducing the center of gravity. The dimensions of the pannier enabled spare tires, and sand ladders to be mounted without compromising the vehicle width. The supporting workshops constructed this pannier for field testing, however, the design was never pursued once the SAS left North Africa. Other additions to the Jeep, are the brackets next to each seat. Each bracket holds two German M24 stick grenades, handy for throwing during a raid. The cruise goggles are hanging off the Vickers K machine gun and stick grenade. Their webbing is on the commander's seat and slung over the front water jerry. The SAS officer and driver. This figure is a modified version of the World War II, British Expeditionary Force officer made by D-Day Miniatures. He is the detachment commander, a second lieutenant who was recruited from the Coldstream Guards. He is wearing a German leather flying jacket, with all insignia removed, less the Lieutenant Colonel, Oberstleutnant rank on the left sleeve. He is also carrying one of the very few MP43s that was in North Africa. Both of these items were liberated after a successful airfield raid in late 1942. In addition, he has placed the MP43 ammunition pouches, that can hold six magazines on his webbing. The SAS Corporal Driver. 
This figure is a modified version of the British tanker with fuel can, made by Sovereign 2000. He was recruited from the Parachute Regiment, and through courage under fire and natural ability to lead men, has been promoted to Corporal. He was one of the ex-Paris that helped design the pannier on the command vehicle. Before the war, he was a miner, working at the Old Meadows Coal Pit, Bacup, Lancashire, and he was the first person in his extended family that has ever left the Shire. The Long Range Desert Group. Depicted here is the troop commander's Chevy truck with an operating crew of three personnel. The vehicle is Tamir's British LRDG command car, 30 hundredweight truck, with minor scratch built modifications. This patrol has been a hard one for the truck. Traveling through difficult terrain, the body has sustained some damage. There is a bent left fender, after bouncing over a rock whilst cresting a spur line. Damage to the right bumper and fender after dropping into unseen dead ground, and a bent right running board and fender due to the truck sliding off a rough track, into a ditch. Seeing that the headquarter vehicles will move back into the center of the position, after the orders have been completed, the tailgate has been lowered in order to conduct concurrent activity. Replenishing empty jerry cans and brewing up, with chi tea and rum is occurring. The LRDG and Patrol Commander. This figure is a slight modification of the LRDG Kiwi Scorpion No. 2, made by New World Miniatures. He is a New Zealander, and holds the rank of Captain and was recruited from Headquarters, 2nd New Zealand Division. Even though he lived in New Zealand, he completed his schooling in England at Eton College. It was there during his senior years, that he accompanied Ralph Bagnold in 1932, on a desert exploration in the North African country of Chad. A chance meeting in Cairo 1942, saw the two men reunited and the captain being seconded into the desert group. At the end of each day, he would wear his Eton scarf to ward off the creeping cold and wear sandals, to air out his feet, much to the merriment of his men. The Corporal Rear Gunner this figure is a slight modification of the LRDG Commonwealth NCO, made by New World Miniatures. He is an Australian, and was recruited from the 2nd, 13th Field Company, Royal Australian Engineers, 2nd AIF in Cyrenaica, Libya 1941. From the age of 13, this NCO worked on Davenport Downs Cattle Station in Western Queensland as a jackaroo. He became adept at finding lost cattle by vehicle who had wandered into the Simpson Desert. These skills were put to good use in 1941, when the engineers were conducting route reconnaissance for desert crossings. His efforts came to the attention of the LRDG, who quickly secured his services. The Signaler and Driver. This figure is the British radio operator, LRDG figure, number one, made by Resicast. He is a New Zealander who volunteered for the LRDG from the 2nd New Zealand Divisional Signals. He enlisted as an 18-year-old on September 12, 1939 into the New Zealand Expeditionary Force. The force embarked for Egypt in January 1940, arriving the following month. It was during this time that he showed flair as a radio operator, and was subsequently posted to Divisional Signals. He found service life quite boring in and around Cairo, and he was always finding interesting ways of getting into trouble, so when the LRDG was being formed, he leapt at the opportunity, some say pushed by his superiors, and he became one of the best radio operators in the group. When the headquarter group arrived at the edge of the escarpment, the first priority was to establish communications with Cairo. This was achieved by erecting the Wyndham antenna on the mast poles carried on the side of the LRDG truck. The corporal and signal man removed the mast poles and the antenna kit, stowed under the radio set. Assembled the masts, two poles per side, attached the guy ropes, hammered the pegs to support the masts and prepared the Wyndham antenna. Whilst in Cairo, the enterprising signaler, found, in fact, stole a canvas cover off a military policeman's cheap trailer and took it to a local sale maker. For a carton of cigarettes and some kiwi lager, the sale maker turned the cover into a handy storage bag for the antenna. The signaler's webbing, headdress and goggles are located on the truck. 
The commander's webbing and headdress is located on the front seat, with his boots and socks airing out on the running board. His goggles are still on his head. The corporal's webbing is next to him, whilst his slouch hat and goggles are at his station on the back of the truck. Approximately, a third of the stores in the back of the truck has been unloaded in the middle of the defensive position, in order for concurrent activity to occur. From the warning order received in the morning, the patrol was provided with likely mission and tasks for each organization. So whilst confirmatory orders are being received, the remainder of the patrol are redistributing fuel, rations, ammunition and other stores. It is getting close to sunset, so the soldiers got their field packs from the vehicles and put on their cold weather clothing, in readiness for the cold night ahead. So, in summing up, the commanders are considering their most likely courses of action for the change of mission. The signaler is maintaining Morse communications with Cairo. The LRDG gunner has sorted out everyone's brew for the evening and is waiting for the water to boil by scanning the horizon, looking for enemy sign. The SAS corporal has just finished fueling a jerry from the truck, and is about to place it back on the jeep. A change of mission. Libya, 1943. Special thanks to World Music for providing the soundtrack, Epic Arabian Battle Music, The Arrivals, The Great Fortress and The Golden Age. And Epic Middle Eastern War Music, Escape from the Hell.